I'm a clinical neurophysiologist. I've been involved in clinical neurophysiology for the best part of 45 years. I have a PhD in, in that subject. My job is uh, assessing patients with neuromuscular disorders, running objective neurophysiological investigations on them and assessing the probable causes of their nerve or muscle pathology. For musculoskeletal practice, I think surface EMG is the key. The kind of EMG that I use, which is needle electromyography, uh, is very suitable for looking at motor unit dysfunction, for looking at pathology within the muscle or within the nerve. But in musculoskeletal practice, the questions are different and the emphasis should be on looking at the whole muscle performance, how muscles interact with other muscles within their uh, functional groupings and how patients may or subjects may vary in terms of the way they use their muscles. Currently EMG is not in widespread clinical use and the reason for that is because either the systems are too crude, they're not sensitive enough, they don't perform very well or the ones that do perform are extremely expensive. So I think what's been really necessary in this arena is the development of an affordable, high quality, easily usable system. And that's what I think Mr. EMG achieves. I think clinicians try very hard to assess motor behavior, motor performance, usually through observation, through maybe palpating muscles, sometimes by measuring strength outputs. The problem with all of those is that it's firstly subjective, and secondly, any measurement of motor strength usually relies on a group of muscles acting together. So it's very, very difficult, if not impossible, in a clinical setting to isolate a single muscle and say, is this muscle actually working or not? EMG, because of the electrodes, and especially in the system that we're talking about, Mr. EMG, the electrodes are picking up from a small locus over a particular muscle, they are excellent at reducing crosstalk from other muscles, so you can be absolutely confident that the recordings that you're getting are specific to that one muscle. And that will tell you, and it will tell your patient exactly what those muscles are doing. And then you can devise the exercises for building the muscle up or for reducing its contribution if you feel it's overactive. Uh, and both clinician and patient get that kind of information. So we call that biofeedback. So patients can see that when they squeeze a muscle, they can see what's happening on the screen. They can tell if they are activating the muscle or not. And for most people that is pretty revelationary. So then they can be trained to increase activity or decrease activity by making various manoeuvres and they learn the consequences of their actions. That's a massive part of, of what surface EMG can do. And I would think for any practitioner that should be an extremely exciting possibility. Yes, so a major strength I think of the system is its versatility. So it can be used in a clinical setting where you have someone come in and you can measure and assess them and they can see the, the, directly the output of that assessment. But more than that, the system because of its portability can be taken into workplace situations into sporting situations, into the home, uh, where it may be that there is a fundamental problem that's causing that patient's pain or their disability. You can measure their muscle output in its context, not in the more artificial context of a clinic. So then the patient, subject and the clinician can see exactly where the problem lies. And that's such an important thing for helping people to understand what's causing their, you know, the fundamental cause of their breakdown. Exercise is often prescribed in musculoskeletal rehabilitation and you can demonstrate exercises to patients and they can get an idea of what you're trying to get them to do, but actually to see what's happening needs some kind of feedback mechanism. And EMG is the perfect tool for that. You can see what the exercise is actually doing to the muscle. And then you can motivate that person by asking them to increase that activity or decrease if, it, if that's the case. Uh, and it gives them that immediate feeling for whether they're achieving the goal. 
Well, really, it's for anyone that's interested in knowing what their patients or what their subjects are doing in terms of using their muscles. So, how their muscles are activated during normal tasks, um, during prescribed exercises. Anyone that wants to know about where the muscles are being activated and by how much, I think it's an absolutely key tool. It provides objective, reproducible methods of investigating musculoskeletal problems. Thank you.